In the upcoming week on Days of Our Lives, Eric Brady is facing financial challenges, leading him to delegate babysitting duties to John Black and Marlena Evans. As they spend time with Jude Brady, Eric's adopted child, they start noticing a resemblance between Jude and Eric's baby pictures, prompting questions about Jude's parentage. Given Nicole's past accusations and tampered DNA tests, John and Marlena, with their investigative skills, might unravel the truth behind Jude's origins. Stay tuned for potential paternity revelations and ensuing drama. Meanwhile, other events in Salem include Julie uncovering Chanel's disappearance in the snowstorm, leading Johnny to search for her while Paulina grows increasingly worried. E.J. DeMera faces public scrutiny and sibling rivalry with Stefan, whose legal maneuverings put E.J.'s reputation on the line. As alliances shift and secrets threaten to unravel, Salem's residents find themselves entangled in personal and legal battles that could reshape their futures. The show also explores interpersonal dynamics, such as Johnny and Chanel's newlywed bliss interrupted by unexpected challenges, and Nicole's struggles with family and regret. With tensions rising and relationships tested, viewers can expect twists and turns in this week's episodes of His Days of Our Lives. Welcome to a pastime shows, where the drama unfolds and the stories captivate. Join us as we delve into the intriguing world of A Days of Our Lives, revealing the untold tales and hidden truths behind the headlines. Days of Our Lives, Eric's infant picture indicates Jude is the father, John and Marlena see a strange resemblance? According to spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Eric Brady will assign John Black and Marlena Evans to watch the kids during the week of April 15th to 19th. Eric will delegate some of the management to John and Marlena for the time being, as he has a lot on his plate with regards to resolving his financial troubles with Sloan Peterson Brady. Naturally, spoilers for days indicate that Marlena and John will be content to spend a little more time together with Jude Brady. It's crucial to remember that there's a significant likelihood the townhouse will be the location of this babysitting session. It's also important to think about why it's a significant day's spoiler that John and Marlena are watching Jude. What will happen with Jude this afternoon or tonight that will make it more than just a time for family time? Jude is definitely beginning to get more unique features and look less like a generic baby now that he is a little older. Since they haven't cast a real child yet, Days of Our Lives viewers aren't truly seeing this but the idea about the characters swooning over Jude when he's wrapped up or in his play yard still holds true. Day's spoilers indicate that Marlena and John will have hours to get a close-up view at Jude, thus Marlena may decide to pull out Eric's childhood photos as a result. What happens if John and Marlena see an eerie resemblance between Jude and one of Eric's old baby pictures? Given that Jude is adopted, it might be something that seems really unsettling. John and Marlena might initially dismiss it as coincidence, but it might cause them to start having some persistent questions. This is especially true because John works as a private investigator and is skilled at spotting oddities like this. Eventually, Marlena and John would remember that Sloane had been accused by Nicole DiMera of robbing her of her own baby child. John and Marlena may, of course, also recall Nicole's DNA test and how easily such are tampered with in Salem. To prove that Sloane wasn't responsible for a baby theft, E.J. DeMera's DNA was compared to Jude's since it was thought that DeMera was Nicole's child's father. Could John and Marlena begin piecing together the puzzle pieces if they discover Jude bears a striking resemblance to Eric as a baby? Could it ultimately result in a different DNA test and proof that Jude is Eric and Nicole's child? Spoilers for days of our lives state that the truth will eventually surface. So stay tuned for updates on any shocking paternity news as well as additional forecasts of the ensuing mayhem. Days of our lives April 16, a Tuesday Paulina is duped by Johnny, Julie reveals Chanel's cover-up, and Stefan triumphs over EJ. According to Tuesday, April 16, spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Ava Vitali will want assistance packing up her possessions at Trip Johnson and Wendy Shin's house. 
Harris Michaels will gladly assist, having granted Ava permission to move in with him. Naturally, now that Clyde Weston is pressuring Ava to get Gil Carter's black book out of the bistro, she will be very worried. While they transport all of Ava's belongings, Harris will console her and possibly divert her attention. According to teasers for other days, Johnny DeMera and Julie Williams will get more and more anxious about Chanel DeMera, who got lost in the snow. Johnny will opt to go looking for Chanel, as least as best he can given the current blizzard, because there won't be a way to get in touch with her because she left her phone behind at the cabin. But before Johnny begins his pursuit for Chanel, he has a call from Paulina Price. Johnny will come up with a fake reason why she can't answer the phone once he picks it up. Johnny may behave as though Chanel is the restroom or anything like. In any event, Paulina will only keep phoning, so it will only be a temporary solution. The next time Paulina calls, Julie will take her call while Johnny goes in search of Chanel. According to teasers for days, Julie will confess that Chanel has vanished, and Paulina will get extremely alarmed about the danger her daughter is in. Johnny will return to the phone and attempt to reassure her after failing to locate Chanel. Though, deep down, Johnny will be scared sick, he will swear he will find Chanel no matter what. Sarah Horton will check on Paulina while she's in isolation at some point during Tuesday's episode of Days of Our Lives, but it won't be long before Paulina decides to break out of the hospital and try to find Chanel on her own. Day's spoilers state that Xander Cook and Chad DeMera will step in when E.J. DeMerrill tries to avoid speaking with reporters in the town square following the press conference. When it comes to E.J., Chad and Xander will ask some pointed questions, particularly regarding Xander's frame-up and Stefan DeMera's employment with Clyde. EJ will try to get out of the grilling session and will eventually run into another issue. After learning the judge's ruling, Stefan will show there and brag about his freedom. Nicole DeMera and Stefan will eventually square off, which will unnerve EJ. When it becomes clear that Stefan is threatening to reveal every detail that EJ is hiding, EJ will be forced to declare a temporary ceasefire. Even then, Stefan and Kristen D. Mera are about to form a partnership, thus the conflict surrounding D. Mera Enterprises is far from ended. According to teasers for Days of Our Lives, EJ may be receiving some unsettling news. Stay in for more updates on all the mayhem. After EJ attempts to eject Stefan, Johnny and Julie realize that something is seriously wrong at the cabin. Today on Days of Our Lives, Johnny and Chanel venture outside into the snow, Holly attempts to make peace, and EJ tries to throw Stefan's hearing. When Days of Our Lives opens, we see a scene of Smith Island covered in snow. Johnny and Chanel wake up on the couch in the Horton cabin, and he tells his new bride that it's national take a wild guest day, followed by get naked in a cabin day, and kiss your husband day. However, Julie storms in and quickly leaves in terror as they get to work. Julie tries to escape over breakfast, but the newlyweds inform her they're stuck inside due to snowfall. But April is here. Julie shouts. Trapped in the cabin with two hot newlyweds is how she currently feels. After expressing regret for interrupting their honeymoon and speculating about what they would do, Julie offers to go play in the snow and make memories. To their dismay, she dresses them in an odd assortment of worn-out winter attire. Are we five now? When will Julie return to the other room, Johnny queries. After briefly running into the snow, they return to Julie to tell her how much fun they had. Julie is overjoyed and offers to play charades in addition to providing some cognac and hot chocolate. They notice the fire is running low in the middle of charades, so Johnny offers to grab more wood. After complimenting him on his greatness, Julie and Chanel discuss Paulina's condition. Julie remembers her time spent there with her grandparents, Tom and Alice, and Chanel reminds her that the cabin is such a lovely place. It's comparable to the time capsule, which she believes was intended to pose a challenge to the next generations. Much like a puzzle. 
Chanel then advises her to leave and assist Johnny. Nicole is sipping coffee in silence in the Demera estate when EJ enters. She went for a run to get her mind clear, but she couldn't stop thinking about the events of the previous few months, including Holly's troubles and the loss of the baby. As a result, she felt a little confused. She should take her time and decide what she wants to do right now, EJ advises. Holly says she was hoping for a snow day when she walks in before they head out for the big press conference, but EJ tells her that the snowstorm narrowly missed them, so that's unfortunate. Holly is unsure of how to deliver the apology letters she has for Tate and his family. Nicole expresses her pride in Holly and requests to accompany them. EJ is not happy about having to apologize in public, and when Holly apologizes, he says something about how she has proven him wrong by not being the one who brought the drugs. Holly snaps, claiming that perhaps she did it because her life wasn't ideal. It's my third stepfather, and just so you know, your name carries a lot of baggage. After she storms out, EJ receives a call regarding Stefan's hearing. The judge will have to reject the plea deal because he is going to give such a weak argument. Brady, Tate, and Teresa are having dinner in the bar prior to EJ's major public apology. When Tate saw Holly at school, his parents wanted to talk to him about it. Though it's inevitable, he must avoid her. All they're attempting to do is shield him. Holly won't make things worse in his life. Tate raises his arms. He understands, he refuses to hang out with Holly. However, he wants to discuss something with them. Teresa doesn't believe it's a good idea for him to return to work at the Brady pub. He has to put his studies first. Brady concurs. Tate continues to push, but Holly and Nicole enter the pub before they can go very far. Teresa swears, and Nicole advises Holly to visit Sweet Bits. Holly, though, is eager to distribute her letters of apology. Nicole hesitantly accepts, and Holly gives them to the Taken Aback family while leaving her hand hovering over Tate's. Grinning, he reads it and remembers hugging and giving her his hoodie. Brady is happy that this is coming to an end, and Teresa thanks her as well, albeit Teresa does so grudgingly. However, Teresa clarifies that hanging out with Tate remains unchanged despite the letters. Nicole yells that they would respect their requests and that they understand. After they leave the pub to eat somewhere else, Holly apologizes to Nicole once more for hurting her. After reaffirming their love for one another, Tate yells, what the hell, at his phone. When Teresa notices Tate, the appeal pusher, returning to school, she becomes alarmed and declares she will speak with the principal. Brady is adamant that once EJ issues a public apology, it will end. Teresa is unsure of it. News is not watched by teenagers. Holly, though, approaches and promises to ensure that Tate wasn't the one. Only Brady has expressed gratitude to her. A little taken aback that Stefan hammered out a settlement before consulting an attorney, Sloan meets with him at the Salem Police Department. He continues, well, he's hiring her now. But when she brings up a retainer, he objects. Right now, his fund access is suspended. Stefan stops Sloan in her tracks by promising to give her a large payment. And because of the slowdown in her practice, he understands she needs the assistance. Although Sloan disputes this, he claims that because he lacks cash up front, he will have to pay twice as much. Stefan nods and continues, explaining that she's there despite his agreement because he knows EJ would try to deceive him. Arriving, shocked that the hearing was pushed forward, EJ questions Stefan's legal representation. Stefan claims he has zero faith in his brother. Someone had to stand by him. They revisit the conditions of the agreement and discuss how Stefan obtained it by threatening EJ with damaging information. However, Stefan claims that they are family, and when he returns home, he wants his money back. EJ laughs at him for coming home, but Stefan tells him that's it, or else EJ will have to pay. 
During the hearing, EJ describes the plea agreement and how Stefan has assisted in stopping drug use. All he needs is time served. The judge, appalled by EJ's obvious nepotism toward his brother, rolling her eyes. When the judge is not pleased with what EJ has to provide. Sloan intervenes and gives a detailed account of all the assistance Stefan has provided in terms of apprehending members of the drug ring and limiting the enterprises of a well-known drug kingpin. She continues by discussing Clyde's threats against Gabby, including the idea that she would be harmed if Stefan tried to defy him. She believes that time served should be sufficient given his coercion and his actions in aiding the authorities. The judge is considering all of the information and will let everyone know when she makes a judgment. Stefan queries its meaning. Hold on, says Sloan. Later, she will check in. Stefan wants to know what the devil EJ was doing when they are by alone. He purposefully made a flimsy argument, but according to EJ, he followed their agreement exactly, no more, no less. Then they exchange threats with each other. Even if Stefan doesn't yet have the recording, EJ can still tell people about Harris. Any day of the week, my blackmail outweighs yours. He leaves irrationally. When everyone arrives in the final moments of the show, EJ is already finishing up the press conference. Brady demands to know what occurred as soon as he approaches. Teresa claims that although EJ acts foolish, he began working before the media arrived. EJ gestures to his PR representative, the man over there. Tate persuades his parents to give up and go, but Brady insists on a written record of their conversation. After EJ leaves, Nicole apologizes and says he's sorry, but he's not very good at it. Hooray for me! Sadly, EJ Teresa lets out a faux cry. Tate and Holly's stares linger as Nicole apologizes on behalf of the entire family and they part ways. Julie wonders where the kids are while she works on crossword puzzles by herself in the cabin. She goes back inside after calling for them from the porch. They've spent too much time in the open. As she's about to walk away, Johnny reappears carrying wood. The wood they had was wet, so he had to go farther. They fear as Julie wonders where Chanel is. Not that Johnny saw her. Then, on Days of Our Lives, Chanel disappears into the snow while EJ tries to avoid the reporters. For more of the latest updates and behind-the-scenes secrets from Days of Our Lives, make sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell. Stay in the know with every new release.